Hi everyone, welcome back to a special type of video here on RJK English. I'm going to call this rantings and ravings. These are my opportunity to talk to you about issues that are happening in current events or things I'm interested in. And I'm interested in a lot of things. <laughs> and I thought for English, this could be very useful because we are talking about things that can be emotional, that hit our intellect. And this is the way to learn language. I have a student, he's from China, from Hanzhou. He challenges himself to describe difficult concepts. He doesn't say it perfectly. He has to use things like, okay, it's like, for example, he has to use these types of things in order to explain. And then I try to draw out what he's saying. And we often talk about issues that are going on in order to have these conversations. So. In Rantings and Ravings, I'm going to talk about things that I like, and we're going to get to know each other. And then I want to know what you think. Maybe I will say something political that you don't agree with. We should all be respectful to each other, but please talk to me. Add something in the comments. And let's talk about this and use this time to expand your ability to speak in English. Introduction done. China's Belt and Road Initiative. This is a very exciting initiative. For some countries, it's frightening. For my country of the US, it's shown as um, frightening. I find it exciting. So the Belt and Road Initiative is, I think, a $2 trillion? I think it's $2 trillion, but it might be even more, that China is spending to connect itself to Africa and, and Asia um, in order to expand its ability to trade. So today we're talking about trade. Um, this is a difficult subject. So China is building roads overland through Eurasia from China. There, there's actually a uh, train that is going to go all the way to London from Western China. They are also working on what they call the maritime road or maritime trade routes. Maritime means ocean. They're working on their oceanic trade routes from China through to the Suez Canal. They're also working on Somalia and Ethiopia, and then up into Greece. China is doing this by investing in a lot of these countries and also buying up ports, which is controversial. So Greece, is, Greece their economy is really bad right now uh, for the last five, six years. China bought some of their ports. I think for 100 years, they get them for 100 years. Greece probably didn't get a very good deal, but this allows China to use Greece, and they're doing the same thing with Ethiopia, and this allows them to trade very easily in this area. Also, there are overland routes. So, for instance, my friends in Kashmir, they talked about the Belt and Road that is going through to Pakistan. So it's going through Ladakh, which is the upper part of Kashmir, through Pakistan to the Arabian Sea. China wants to be able to, instead of sending out their ships around and through different places, they want to be able to drive things to, to the Arabian Sea and ship from there. This is going to really help China in the future to uh, expand trade. This is what countries have done throughout the ages. How does China sell this? It seems they are selling it by appealing to history. They're appealing to the historic Silk Road. Okay, sometimes this is called the Silk Road. That's why it's called the Belt and Road. The Silk Road were the ancient roads in, we're talking at the time of the Buddha, uh, 500 BC, etc., that went from China through Central Asia and all the way to Europe. And I'm sorry, and in Africa as well. And they were trading goods across these. these are, this is how education spread, culture spread. And what China is saying is they're couching it as, we need to do this. We, by doing this, it's going to help your country and your country and your country. And really it will, it probably will. Ultimately, China is doing it for themselves. This Every country is doing things for themselves. What does this mean? If you notice on the map, it doesn't go into Korea or Japan. And I, this is very interesting. What China is doing is really setting themselves up as the next world power. What is not included in this is the U.S. or Canada or, or Brazil because we're not part of that hemisphere. Think about like all of Eurasia, of course they would work together. I, it makes sense. They have a history together. So in a way, that, that makes a lot of sense. 
the U.S., and this is my opinion, some, has somewhat of a bad effect on the world in some ways because it sees itself as separate. When a country sees itself as separate and is as powerful as the U.S., that means it's not necessarily a give-and-take relationship at all times. Now, I'm not saying that it's all bad. No country is good or bad. But in a way, this could be good for the future to maybe minimize the amount that the U.S. affects the world. It also can connect a lot of uh, Asian countries together. Countries will have to be careful because, of course, China will try to take more and more power, um, just like the European Union has tried and just as the U.S. tries all the time. And it will be a different type of relationship. But it is something that you should be aware of, something that you should read about, and something we should talk about. See you. Hi everyone, welcome to RJK English. Make sure to like and subscribe, and that will help me make more of these videos. I'm on YouTube and on Instagram, and see us on Facebook, and we can talk further.